Hey everyone, it's Kate. And today I'm gonna to talk about the Maria apron from Maven Patterns. I have been searching for a cross back apron like this for years. And I'm so excited to have this pattern in inventory. Um, and I'm gonna cover three slightly maybe difficult aspects of making the apron. Um, I'm gonna talk about sewing a curved pocket I'm going to talk about understitching and I'm going to talk about sandwiching the straps in between the facing and the fashion fabric. But before I start, I'm going to talk a little bit about Maven patterns in general. We carry all the Maven patterns and we love them. Um, the owner of the company is British and she used to work in the business, the garment fashion industry. And so all of her measurements are metric. So if you're American, you'll want to do some um, translating. And also all of her seam allowances are a different width because that's how they do it in the biz. Instead of doing all the seam allowances at five eighths and then trimming half of them and um, you know, making the, trimming them later to make them the right width, you just make them the right width to start with so you don't have to trim. So you want to pay attention to whether it's a quarter inch seam allowance, a three eighths or a five eighths. But it's all very clear in the instructions. She also loves to block fuse her interfacing, which is also my favorite method. Um, and to block fuse, you cut out a rectangle of fashion fabric that's um, just a little bit bigger than the pieces that you want to interface and you fuse a piece of interfacing to that fabric before you cut out your pattern pieces. And so it's all done for you and you don't have to fiddle with funny little shapes and getting them lined up and ironing them. I, I think it turns out much nicer that way. And she also has a little bit different vocabulary than we do. Um, she calls basting tacking so whenever she says tack she means hand based something in place and she says foot stitch which is something i've never heard of before which means to top stitch the width of the foot away from the edge so it's called foot stitch it's my new favorite word um so i'm gonna get started i'm gonna talk about the curved pocket I'm gonna talk about understitching and how to sandwich your straps in between the fashion fabric and the facing. So let's go to the overhead and I'll start on the pocket. All right, so the pockets are nice and big and curved and they have a traditional turn, double turn down hem and I'm gonna show you how to do that and then I'm gonna show you how I like to hem a curve. Um, the, so the first thing you do to, for the hem, there are little, you make little snips in your pad, there are little snips in the pattern pieces that show you where to do these turndowns, but the first turndown is about 3 eighths of an inch. And I really like to turn down the fabric and then pin it to the ironing board and then iron it. It's a great, I think it's a great method. I learned it when I was learning how to teach people to learn to sew. And it's, I do it every time now because I hate burning my fingers. So the second turn down notches are about an inch away from the first one. And so you're gonna press the hem in place and then you're going to um, flip it back. So you're gonna keep your first um, fold in place, but the second one, the main hem, you're gonna flip back, flip it back so it's right sides together with the top of the pocket. And then you're gonna pin the flip back in place. So it's right sides together and you'll see how this works. So I'm going to head to the machine and I'm going to stitch 
these edges down at 3 8 of an inch, but then I'm going to go all the way around the pocket and thread mark at 3 8 of an inch so I know where to hem the rest of the pocket. And it makes it easier to hem a curve that way. So here I go to the machine. All right, oops, I'm going to start with the right side up. And this, I triple checked, this seam allowance is one centimeter, which I call three eighths of an inch. And here we go. This fabric is thin enough. This is a, a linen cotton blend um, that I don't need a um, big jig or anything, but if you're using really thick canvas for this, you might want to start with a big jig. I talk about that in my sewing with denim video. Good morning, Gail. I'm so glad you're here. So as I go around the corner, if things get a little bunched up, I'll stop with the ne needle in the down position, lift the foot, reposition and keep smoothly going around the corner. You can go kind of fast on the straightaway. So this pattern comes with a piece that you can make a template out of to press your pocket over. Um, and I did that with the Maven Good Time skirt, but I actually find this thread marking method a little easier. Hey, Kathy from Maryland. Welcome. I'm so glad you're watching. Um, and this is also the way that the instructions have you do the hem at the bottom of the apron. So it's a good, a good way to practice to get ready to do the big hem. All right, so I've gone all the way around. I'm going to head back to the ironing board and I'm going to trim these corners here and here. Oh, I'm going to trim this big long thread. Um, maybe. Now I lost it. Um, I just, I always think I'm trimming my threads as I go and then I find them all the time. So now that you've made the top, you're just going to flip it around. Um, this is an awl, but it's not sharp. I never poke out my um, corners with something sharp because knowing me, I will poke too hard and make a hole. So I've made my corners relatively relatively crisp and I'm just going to press the hem in place so that is ready to go um, at this point you should actually top stitch the hem but I'm not doing that today so now that I because I have my thread marking I'm going to use it so I know where to press for the hem. As I said, you can use the template. I used it on the good time skirt, but I didn't find it any easier. Oh, hey, Barbara from Texas. I bet it's nice and warm still in Texas. It was a little bit nippy this morning. Um, we've had some frost on our vegetables, and so, so I'm just going around, and there's going to be some kind of folding over on the wrong side, but you just want that the um, curve to be nice and curvy and not abrupt. So do I have this in the right place, Rachel? Can they see? take it. Um, Rachel is my amazing videographer. 
we're getting every video we get we learn a little bit more and get a little bit better all right i'm gonna get this all pinned and i really love this pinning to the ironing board method especially for tricky bits like this because then you don't have to burn your fingers and you can use a nice hot iron all right so all of these pins i'm using are either glass head or our magic pins that have these blue heads and um, they're iron resistant so you can just you can really stomp down on them and iron your hem in place so i get it semi in place with the pins in and then i remove them And um, I will probably spend more time getting the curves beautiful than I want to do on video. But after I take out the pins, I'll iron it one more time and then flip it over and make sure that I think it looks like a nice curve on the right side. It looks okay. I will probably fiddle with it just a tiny bit more. But so after you turn the hem under once, she has you tack or baste the pocket to the apron. And let me show you that. So this is exactly how I would do it if it even if it didn't say in the instructions. So I love that the instructions have you do it this way. So I have, this is my other pocket that I already pressed and I hand basted it to the apron. You also wanna compare your two pockets to make sure that they are about the right, the same size. And I'm gonna show you on the other side so you can see my basting a little better, there you go. So you can see that, oh, this way, you see that I have basted it to the apron and then it's ready to top stitch. And I love the basting method because it doesn't shift around and everything goes much quicker. So let's talk about understitching. It's another t um, method that she uses in this pattern. And I consider understitching a magic trick, a sewing magic trick. It is so easy and it makes such a huge difference. In this, you understitch both the straps and then also the armholes. And I'll show you the armholes in a minute. But all you need to do when you're understitching, now this is the fashion fabric, the burgundy, and then the floral is my facing fabric. So you sew them together, right sides together, just like regular. And then instead of pressing the seam open, you press it Toward, seam up the seam allowance toward the facing and then you just stitch the facing down to the seam allowance so you can see I've got two rows of stitches one is the seam and the other is just stitching the facing down and then when you fold the facing to the wrong side I, I haven't pressed anything it just magically makes a little bit of the fashion fabric go toward the back and none of the facing show in the front. So there's the front and then on the back, hopefully you can see that there's a tiny bit of fashion fabric peeking out on the facing side. So I just love understitching. It's so easy and it makes things look so fancy. So let me show you the armholes, which are also understitched and how nice they turned out. So the armholes are stitched with a quarter inch seam allowance, which is six millimeters. And so you don't have to clip or um, trim them because it's such a small seam allowance. You sew the facing to, um, to the fashion fabric, 
understitch and then the facing just goes to the wrong side and it looks gorgeous without really that much effort. Okay, now it's time for the um, strap sandwich. Hey, Carly from Fort Benton, Montana. Oh my gosh, Fort Benton is the prettiest town. I love Fort Benton. If you guys haven't been there, it's worth it. All right, so the next part that could be confusing is making the strap sandwich. Oh, let me show you the picture first. So this is good, okay. So on my apron that I'm wearing right now, I have a little label in the front that says this took forever because getting this is the hardest part of getting this strap B front over to the back and the front of A over to the back of A and making sure you don't don't um, twist them. I did end up doing this part a couple of times before I got it right, but that's what seam rippers are for. So I have finished strap B and I'm gonna put it right here in the front on the left hand side as we're looking at the picture. And let me show you how to do that. So here's my strap B. It's all understitched and foot stitched. Love it. And here is the left side as I'm looking at it of the front of my apron. And so this, there's a thicker side of the strap and a thinner, and this goes in the back and the thin goes in the front. So I'm gonna put the fashion fabric of my strap, right sides together. Um, hello, Ohio. I hope, I hope it's nice there, I hope it's cooling off. Um, so the fashion fabric of my strap, I, right sides together with the fashion fabric of my apron. And there's a little notch at the top, so I'm lining up the edge of the strap with that. And then the other edge where the um, facing meets the apron. And then I'm gonna, here's the facing, I'm gonna flip it over because I sewed the armholes, but I did not sew the facing to the top um, yet. So I'm flipping it over and I'm gonna have the right side of the facing against the fa right side of the facing of the strap. Um, hopefully you can tell that it might be a good idea to use two different fabrics. <laughs> this is, I think, where I got mixed up when I was making my first one because I just used one fabric. Um, and another thing about the fabric is I used both Elizabeth and I have made one and we used a little more fabric than it called for. So I think it's more like a three yard project. So I have the right side, the fashion fabric against there, the facing against there, everything lined up. I'm pulling my understitching from the armhole over to the wrong side and then pinning my sandwich. And you'll do make this sandwich in three other spots. And then you'll just sew right sides together, the top and then um, the top of the back of the straps. And turn it right side out. Hem it in the same way that, you, that I hem the pocket and you're done. It is a little more confusing making view B because it has asymmetrical an asymmetrical back so that you can completely wrap it around. And that's what I made for both of these because I wanna wear these as a tunic because they're so cute. Um, so I encourage you to make a Maven apron because they're great for, they'll be great for yourself and also they're great gifts. I think everybody loves a crossover back apron and people would really appreciate receiving one from you. Um, I hope that with those tips and tricks, they go together easily for you. 
And I would love to see it if you make one. Um, I hang out in our Confident Stitch Facebook community all the time. And if you post a picture of one that you made there, I'll see it and I'll be able to admire it. Um, I will be back on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday at noon, when I'm gonna make this field bag from Grainline Studios. It's another great gift. Um, it's really good for knitters. It has perfect pockets for um, knitting tools and yarn. And I'll show you how to make this on Wednesday at noon mountain time. Once again, all the fabrics I'm using, this, all of these fabrics are for sale at the Confidence Stitch and the Maven pattern is also for sale. So I, pre I um, hope that you'll head over to the website and take a look. Thanks for watching and bye for now.